Out today on this uh, chilly Sunday morning, a couple of things I wanted to address, and um, I asked Vinny if I could please introduce him today. The reason is because three years ago, many of us had the misfortune of watching Danny Montalvo introducing his good friend Eddie Vialta and nominating him for president of Local 804. Those of you who don't know, um, they didn't turn out to be such good friends. And what Danny did to Eddie was just sickening. What he did to the former e-board members, sickening. So it made me realize that not only doesn't he know the definition of friend, but those guys on that slate don't know the definition of brotherhood or what being a teamster really means. So the reason I asked Vinny that I wanted to introduce him is because uh, Vinny and I met about eight years ago and we started working together. And a real friendship, Vinny Perron. And to uh, reiterate Scott's words, thanks everybody for coming out here today. I know I have some in the peanut gallery already talking about football stuff. You know, uh, right off the bat, I would really just like to introduce the slate that we are running. Okay, so without any further ado, the Experience Matters slate that's going to take over this local in 2019. I would like to introduce Tony Rasiglione. Chris Williamson, Mark Cohen, Rocky DiPaolo, Dave Cintron, Anthony Cerulli, Hector Fortas. Lawrence Grant, Raul Molestina, Pete DiPiero, Lou Barbone, and um, the last member is Dave Luby. He couldn't be here because of prior commitments, but you know that this was set up on a short notice, so we can understand that. Now, um, I want to just say that we decided to run together. This is a group of Teamsters that, like Scott was saying before, we haven't known each other for a ton of years. We haven't, um, you know, we came together with one cause, because we fought this company, right? And it's not just a group of guys that came in to run in an election together. And that's happened before. That's not happening this time. Right. This group is a group of really like-minded individuals. We've been to the same training classes. We've fought this company tooth and nail on everything. Okay, we've, we've um, been to multiple different um, buildings together. We've campaigned, delegate elections, you know, everything that you could possibly think of, training classes, we've all been and done things together. And we are like-minded, you know, so. Um, we've spoken to each other for years. We haven't always agreed. Okay, that's that's a good thing because when you agree all the time, that means it's just like go along, get along. But that's not what we do. We've had our arguments, disagreements, but we've come to the same conclusion that this local needs to change. The leadership needs to change. And you know, to be quite honest, I'm I'm a movie guy, and I really love the Tom Hanks movie Band of Brothers. And this is my Band of Brothers right here. Guys, I'm going to go to war with. I can tell you that every person standing up here or sitting up here, they preach union, they bleed union, they have it in their bones like I do. I mean, you know, guys make fun of me. I bring my wife and kids to union meetings. That's how deeply I feel about this and how deeply my family feels about this. They don't go to the union meetings for free Wi-Fi and bagels. You know, I mean, my friend Hector tells me all the time, stop bringing your wife because she gets too agitated. But that's, that's how I feel, that's how she feels, that's how every gentleman on this slate feels. Okay? And this group of Teamsters right here, 
will absolutely not exclude anybody in this local. Right? We, we don't go after our own. We don't backstab each other. All right? Every member of this local is going to be represented fairly and to 100% of our ability. Right? I mean, I have Rocky DiPaolo already coming up to me telling me, Vin, I want to be in 43rd Street every single day of the week. Okay. There's, there's guys up here, um, Hector, Scott Damone, uh, Dave Cintron, Lou Barbone with his Vote No movement, you know, helped by Shane Devine and a bunch of other people. I mean, they go out of their way to help this membership. And that's, that's what it's all about. Like just information, parking lot meetings, doing the right things by the members. And, you know, look around at this group of supporters. It's not just this group, but you have the Charlie Jordans, the John Santiago's, the D-Doms, you know, Shane Devine's, Lincoln McKenzie's. I mean, tons of others that I can't even name, but we all came together for one thing, all right? This group does not exclude anybody. We've reached across the aisle, all right? Other, other slates, you don't even know who's on the slate. You don't even know what's going on. They're down one, they're down two. I mean, we had a solid group beforehand, but we felt in our hearts that we needed to reach across the aisle to show true unity. We brought Raul Molestina on board, Rocky, Lawrence Grant, great, great guys who have the vision to share the same vision that we do for this local to build unity and strength, get the membership together, get them involved, and that's the only way that we're going to do things. All right. And I got to tell you, working, working for UPS, you get to know real quick that working with the company, it doesn't really happen, it's just a pipe dream. All right. Has anybody here been happy with what's happened for the last three years? Nope. Not, not one person. Okay, I can't personally think of anything that this current e-board has accomplished except dividing each other and going after their own membership. All right. Unity is a key. Education is a key. We plan on educating our membership, sending them to training classes bringing people in-house, sending them out of state, wherever we have to, to train the membership and the business agents of this local even better on how to fight this company. Local 804 Teamsters, I believe, are ready to rise up again. Does anybody else believe that? Yeah. You know, that being said, I've, I've heard rumors you know, Vinny's too hard, this guy, Scott's too hard, Cintron's too hard with the company. And that's not true. All we... Okay, then it is true. <laughs> but um, I think every, every person up here, and I think most of the people that are here, believe that the only way to get through to this company is to enforce a contract. I mean, it's, it's that simple. True. They agreed to it. Okay, they signed it. Some of us were there at negotiations. The labor managers are really quick to say, "Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great uh, TOK. That's a great agreement that we reach." And then you get down to the um, center level, the building level, and the DM says, "Screw you. We're just going to do whatever we want." And that that's not going to happen anymore. That I can tell you. Our business agents can't be everywhere, but we know we have enough support. All right, that we know that we can make our presence felt everywhere, and that's important. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be in these buildings. Whether I know Greg is here, worried about the Knights in Melville, right, and you know, other people are here worried about representation. But I have a group of guys here that honestly are chomping at the bit to just get into these buildings and to fix stuff. It's not gonna happen overnight, especially the way things have gone, but it is gonna happen. You can trust me on that. Every building is different. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, I worked in Suffolk for a month and there's guys with horse trailers in Suffolk delivering packages. You know, in, in Manhattan there's skyscrapers and every building has their own issues. But the one most important thing is that the contract is the contract and it has to be enforced all over the place. That's it. And the business agents are going to do it, the shop stewards are going to do it. I'm hoping that all the shop stewards will enforce the contract. And, uh, we you know, do. We enforce the contract. 
and you're going to have, and Juan, you're going to have our backing, all right? We're not just going to lay down to this company. There's ways of doing it, and we're going to do it the right way. This is... Nobody, nobody up here is going to be throwing a ball around with a manager or a division manager while a member's getting walked out. <laughs> or buying him coffee or pizza or anything like that. Okay. Sure. Every effort, every effort has to be made to make every member feel welcome, not only on the shop floor, but in our union hall. All right? I mean, there's guys here that have gone down there, they see camera equipment, they see people locking the doors, they see people basically running away from them. I've seen it too, and I've gone down there for panel preps, all of a sudden you hear boom, 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 10 doors closing and nobody wants to talk to you. That's not gonna happen anymore. Every single member is gonna feel comfortable going down to that union hall, all right? And we're, we have some plans implemented to start um, you know, video libraries and um, like training sessions and a place where members could go and look up stuff, almost like a regular library, all right, at the union hall. Right? It's, it's stuff like that, that this slate, this group of guys has already planned out, even like the small stuff like that, not just the big stuff, but we've, we've looked into everything. We've been talking about this and writing stuff down, not irrational stuff like the company's gonna buy us lunch after, or dinner after eight hours, that's crazy. But this is, this is the stuff that we're talking about. You know, there's a huge difference between, you know, having a working relationship with this company and working with the company, right? Uh, everybody should understand that. Working with the company is a detriment to the union. Having a working relationship where you could come to an agreement on stuff, okay, so then stuff doesn't have to go to the next level. You know, we won't have to let the hounds out, all right? But when management honors the contract, it's always gonna go back to the contract and starts treating members respectfully, then we'll treat them with respect. I always, I was just talking to a couple of members before that, uh, I've always told management when they've asked me, why are you such a dick? You have that on tape, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I, I always told them, because I'm going to make you feel as uncomfortable every day as you make my members feel. Okay? We are going to uphold this contract, and I'm going to say the word contract because this means a lot to me. All right? and have a zero tolerance policy on violations. Of course they're gonna say, no, we're not paying it. No, you're wrong. No, we could just agree to disagree. And that's just a stall tactic for them. Okay, but we're gonna allocate resources to make sure that this contract is enforced. Right now, the current board had 17 people on their slate. We, now they're running 13, there's room for more business agents, there's room for more monies to be spent. Um, obviously we're gonna save some money because we're gonna get rid of Mr. Kane. That's gonna be the first step. Uh, we, plan on, we plan on going back to the old firm that used to do the funds, uh, Cohen, Weiss, and Simonson. And they, you know, I mean, just off the top of my head, I think it was like only 60% of the amount of money that Mr. Kane is charging the local for the same, you know, probably, and they'll do a much better job because they've been doing it for 30 or 40 years. And uh, it's, all, it's all very doable. Our plan is all very doable. We have um, a panel system. You know, uh, I went to panel myself. I'm sure there's people out here that went to panel. I know guys that lost their jobs. I, I know guys that took massive suspensions, right, that weren't justified. But, you know, it was put in place, and I was there in negotiations, and it was supposed to be chaired by the company and the union. And all of a sudden, it wasn't chaired by the company and the union. It seems like the company tells the union what to do all the time as far as which cases go forward, what's presented, you know, and uh, that's not gonna happen anymore. I mean, we have every legal right in, you know, the panel, in 72-hour hearings. 
we have we have tons of legal rights, and we're going to implement them. I mean, we I want to say this nicely. We have um, no problem bringing in outside agencies, okay, like the NLRB. I mean, the DOT. FCC, whoever we need to call on, fire marshals, you know, when there's egress problems in the building. This is all stuff that's... OSHA? OSHA, yeah. OSHA. You know, everything, everything from, like, no ventilation to, you know, uh, uh, guys on the, on the belts getting bombarded with boxes. I mean, stop, stop the belts. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you don't want to do it, we'll get people to do it for you. Okay. This company has been around for what, 1907, so it's like a million years, right? So they've been, they've been around for a million years, and they've made a ton of money, and they know how to make money, right? And they make money off of our backs, and okay, it's our job, and we do our job. But the goal of a union is not to help squeeze more out of you guys. And I'm right there with you, because I'm a package car driver. So the goal of the union is to get the most for its members, okay? We're gonna demand good faith bargaining, we're gonna demand that the contract be upheld, and we're gonna demand that the abuses start. Stop, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> they started a long time ago. abuse them now! <laughs> well, you know what? We'll give them a chance, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Right? It's, it's simple, don't take advantage of our membership, don't bastardize the agreements that you agreed to, okay? And everybody will, everybody will be fine. I don't really think that's gonna happen, but you know, going into that, in uh, early January, every new executive board gets a, um, what's called a transition meeting. And I'm gonna tell you right now, at that meeting, everybody here will be there, and we're gonna ask them very nicely, that we need them to reset the clock back. Okay, they've had a little party for the last three years. Okay. It's been a little bit of a one-sided relationship. You know, like the dog brings you a slipper and you beat the dog. That's not gonna happen anymore. All right, so they've bastardized the collective bargaining agreement for too long and we're gonna give them a chance to reset it and tell them politely that it stops ASAP. That local 804 Teamsters aren't gonna take it anymore. Right. <laughs> With that, there's a um, handout that was on, I believe every other, you don't have to even look at it now. I want you guys to take it with you. Look at it at home. I want it posted on Facebook. I want somebody to give it to a labor manager because there's nothing in there that's a secret, okay? It says on the, on the top of it that it's a $5.9 million plan. All right, that's sort of my sarcasm coming out. There's $5.9 million in the general fund that's you know sitting there collecting 1.75% interest or whatever it's collecting. And um, it, it's down because this, uh, this executive board has uh, pissed away a little bit of it with like lawyers and you know charging this guy and charging that guy and blah, 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 blah. No, you're, you're right, you're right. So, but you know, every, every general membership meeting since I was a puppy, you know, I, I try to listen, try to do the best I can and I always hear, you know, whether it was Tony McGreeny or Jim Reynolds or whoever the hell's doing it now, oh, the fund has this much money in it, the fund is, is sound, blah, 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 blah. And I always thought, but what's that money doing? So if we have to spend a little bit of that money to defend our membership, that's what we're going to do. You know? We're gonna we're gonna do it in a fiscally responsible manner. You know, we're not throwing money down the sewer, but you know, when it comes to hiring extra business agents, you know, um, implementing other ideas that we have that's in this plan, and I hope somebody does put it on Facebook. And also, I mean, look, 
how many, again, how many people are frustrated with the last three years? Maybe, maybe, maybe how many people are frustrated with the last 15 years? You know, there's, there's been a lot of frustration. You know, it's always like, oh man, they're walking all over us. Oh man, they're doing this, they're doing that with no reaction. And I get that people are afraid. Okay, I get that people, you know, they're like, oh, these guys are gonna, these guys are gonna blow it up. Right? But there's a time when you gotta realize that you know, maybe calling News 12 on these scumbags wouldn't be such a bad idea. <laughs> maybe, you know, I mean, I, I was talking to a couple of guys from 43rd Street when we were campaigning last time and in Foster Avenue also. I told them, I said, well, you know, how would UPS feel if I hired the Goodyear blimp and let it fly around their building saying that UPS engages in un unfair labor practices? You know, for a day. You know, this is all stuff that we can do, and I want them to know that there's a possibility that this will happen. Okay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I mean, the, the membership deserves it. It deserves the best representation possible. All right. I, I just want to stress again that we will. I mean, look. I'm crazy, I've been told, or whatever, but I got a lot of guys in my center here and in my building. Oh, yeah! You know, yeah. There's, there's guys up here that are a little more calm than me, and maybe they'll just, you know, grab me by the shirt collar and tell me to relax. But we will give this company a chance to reset the relationship. But, you know, I think that they also know, and guys here might know, that probably for the last 10 years, 11 years, I've been public enemy number one for them. <laughs> All right, and, and I'm still standing because, and this is what I expect everybody to do, do their job, cover their bases, right? When you're asked something, be honest. Rocky and I and a couple of other guys were just talking about that. And then you let us do the heavy work, all right, when they call you in the office. We're not looking for the company to give us anything they already haven't agreed to. That's a key issue, okay? We will not back down to this company when it comes to their bullying this membership. That's gone on for far too long. Every, every member here or that couldn't make it today on every shift in every classification has to feel comfortable coming in at work. That's our, probably one of our number one priorities, okay? Like I said, everything's already been planned. Everything's already been discussed from panel preps. It's in that handout. You know, we're gonna practice the panel. We're gonna do mock panels. We're gonna uh, review every docket case. We're gonna have meetings reviewing this stuff with the whole slate, not just the executive board, because our business agents have a right to be in on these meetings, because nobody knows what's going on better in these meetings than the business agents, and you shop stewards that are here are the eyes and ears of those business agents. Experience Matters Slate is committed to fight for this entire membership. We're committed to unifying this local, and I think that we've already started doing that, okay? We're looking to give 100% commitment to do our jobs professionally, responsibly, and in this best interest of this membership, okay? On a, on a personal note, because I just want to get this out there. I know who I am, you know. I used to tell guys over the years, you know, when I have 25 years now, but 10 years ago I'd tell them, oh, I have 10 years left to change your mind. I have 10 years left to teach you how to do stuff the right way, all right? I have never in my time as a shop steward or alternate put any member in harm's way and nobody here is gonna put a member in harm's way, okay? I'm gonna ask you for the third time, how have you been treated for the last three years? I'm gonna ask you if you like the way the direction of this local has been going. 
I'm going to ask you if you're ready to help in the task of restoring this local in any way that you can. I have been told by some of these guys and some of you guys that I have to stop wearing pajamas and ugly sweaters and nail polish to work. But um, I'm never going to stop pushing management's buttons, defending you guys. And nobody, nobody's going to stop that's up here with me right now. This is the best group of Teamsters that I've ever seen. And we, all of us together, we're going to change this local. there are any questions from anybody, feel free to come up to the mic or if you have anybody has any remarks or anything. Did you like your orange juice? <laughs> Was that your question? Oh yeah, if you want, come up to the mic. Sure. First off, uh, Juan Acosta, uh, Shop Stewart, Times Plaza, Foster Avenue. First thing I want to say is, uh, it takes a lot of uh, guts, it takes a lot of determination, it takes a lot of commitment to do what you're doing, to change what's going on in, the, in this company, what we're going through for the past three so odd years. And uh, as a shop steward, you know, I'm behind you 110%. And, you know, Dave is running with you guys, and I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for Dave. You know? I'm proud of you, bro. I'm proud of you. My question is, um, as far as panel cases, um, it's not a secret that I was on panel recently and my guys know that I got sold out on my panel. You know, I got sold out, you know, by, I'm not going to say who, you know, out, out of I, hey, hey, first off, I respect the board. I respect any board that's up there because it's, I'm a steward. I got to set the example. But, but what they, what happened wasn't right. Now, my thing is, is that UPS keeps Sending us to panels keeps firing drivers for virtually no reason, you know, at times. Why are we paying for that? You know, it, um, why is it that we got to pay a certain amount of money to do these panels or whatever? Meanwhile, UPS is doing all the accusing. They know they're wrong. And when we win it, we get nothing back. It's, you know, with the driver's job, the back pay. But why do we have to incur the expense on that? Is that it? That's it. Okay, well, it's... That's contractual, and you know we have to split the expense. With that being said, you got put on a panel for bullshit. I got put on a panel because because I hurt my knee, because because Al Falco told me that I should know how not to get hurt after 24 years. So and yeah, but anyway, they got they got killed on multiple levels in court. Okay, but I heard this out of Suffolk. And I'm sure it's going all over the place. It's just that in Suffolk, one of the DMs or managers let it slip out. Their philosophy with this executive board, with anything is, oh, we know we're going to lose, but fuck it, we'll see if it sticks to the wall. I mean, that's their philosophy. That was heard. They've said it. They said it in my building, too. So I'm telling you, I didn't come up here to make any promises, okay? But what I will tell you is that we are all going to make a 100% effort that stuff like that stops happening right away. Okay. And, I, and I outlined, I, I talked about some of the stuff, whether it's, you know, people don't believe in the fat cat and the news and, you know, because it puts people in harm's way. But you know what? My gut feeling, which I've always gone with my gut feeling and it's gotten a little bigger, is that... Um, <laughs> They're not just going to give you something. All right. They're not going to give us anything. They never have. So if you put their feet to the fire a little bit like they put our feet to the fire, what's wrong with that? You know, I mean, they, they know me and some of the other people up here, the labor managers and stuff. So you know, we're going to do the best we can not to let stuff like that happen, Juan. Fair enough. Okay. Good morning, I'm Jamie from Forsterville. I have a whole bunch of questions, but 
I'm going to just ask one and let other people speak. Yeah. Um, I have a whole bunch of questions, but I'm only going to do one at a time. Let other people speak. Do um, you know this number? <laughs> <laughs> you do do a great job. Go ahead. Well, this question came from another member from off the Facebook thing. Um, the question was, what are your plans for Tuesday through Saturday drivers when a holiday falls on a Monday? Are they going to get Tuesday off so that way they can have the three-day weekend? Or are you going to plan to have them take another day off within a certain amount of days? They should get Tuesday off. Yep. Yep. Well, it, it hasn't been like that. They should get no. Tuesday off. Okay. And they should get. Is the guy a young guy or an older guy? No, that's the older guy. Yeah, I, I had this issue in in my and, and not to cut you off. And it was it was an older guy that gave me the question and a part timer that's been there for a long time because they it was a big it was a big battle with the last holiday being that it fell on a Monday and they had to pick another day to take off. So they they did that all over the place. You know, they did it in my building. The first thing I did was <laughs> what any shop steward would do, myself, John Santiago, whoever, we all called the union hall. And I was fortunate enough to get Brother Riley on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and and Brother Riley told me that there's nothing he can do about it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And, you know, to me, it's they tricked the younger guys into doing it because the Tuesday through Saturday are mostly the younger guys. There's a, cu a few veterans that want to do it. But, um, you know, that, see, that's, that's another thing like what I was talking about before. Right? There's how many buildings now? 15. There's going to be 16 buildings. We're running a slate with 13 people. Right? I know all the good stuff that, oh, yeah, you're getting paid to do the job. It's all true. But that's why we need, and that's why the guys up here have a great network of people that would nip this in the bud, something like this, before it even got to, to that point. You know, before they can do something, like they tried doing this the Thursday before, right? I'm sure it was the same thing in Foster. But we have a group of people that will find out about this way beforehand because we'll hear about it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? If you I have a question, you can come up. Greg has a question. I tend, I tend to stay out of this stuff and try and keep a low profile, but... Uh, You're too tall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, good Marine Corps Chow. What can I say? Uh, I like the idea of assistant business agents and chief stewards. No, don't want a job. I took one of those things. Safety steward was useless. They said they come up for building rates. None of them come in. That's going to lead into the question. This is a nice idea. I think it could be very functional. Are these people actually going to have some responsibility to be able to do something, or is it just no slight intended? Is it just going to be a title so somebody can feel good about themselves? No. That's what's got to be important. And I think... A couple extra business agents would be good if you can get down, if you guys can afford your budget to get down to one business agent per building, it'd be great. I'll leave it at that so you can answer those two questions about the BA and Chief Stewart. Um, I, I touched on that before where, you know, there, I mean, obviously we're not in the hall now, but the people that were in there now had um, at one point 17 members, 17 people working. And, um, you know, we, we are planning, you know, we're hoping that we can hire more people. As far as assistant business agents also, uh, we tried a program like that maybe, uh, what was it, Rich? Like five, six, no, six years ago? And um, we were sort of the guinea pigs, me, Rich Polkowski, Dominic Domenico, and uh, we didn't get paid for it, but we, but we went into the buildings with our Teamster 804 shirts, and we rolled them up, you know, at three in the morning, four in the morning for a ton of violations. At nighttime, we stayed after our shifts. We did it on our own because that's how we felt about it. And um, all those grievances got paid. Right? Supervisors working, everything got paid. I mean, at the time, I think um, Omar Caesar was the labor manager. Right? And he was there while we were in the building, biting his knuckles. You know, like, just what could we do? What, why are these guys here? And we did it. And, you know, but it's got to be a commitment from 
you know, the members that would like to do that too, because, you know, I mean, look, somebody tells me, you know, you know, you might be put in harm's way. I'm like, I don't care. What could they do to me? I'm just making them honor the contract. Some guys might have reservations about doing that. I hope that answers your question. I'd like to get, like, enough business agents to cover every single building. Chief Stewart, what do you plan to do with them? Just have, a, like, you know, bigger buildings and whatever, like a chief steward to disseminate information, stuff like that. I mean, it wouldn't be, like, like that much of an added responsibility, but sometimes you can, he would be, like, maybe a go-between. It's easier to get to one person than three, four, or five people. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. I was just trying to find out where a part-timer falls in place with this. I've been here eight years, and every time a full-time position come around, a full-timer want to knock the part-timers out of the way. Oh, the only way you could get it is go driving. Not everybody's qualified to go driving. It needs to be another way that you can get there. And if it's more than one position is available in a building, why don't they don't offer it to the top seniority of a driver or whoever it is and a part-timer because it seems like it's, you're playing a lotto to get a full-time position. And I think that's wrong. And which, if nobody, Which building are you from? Forster. Forster. It's another building. It's yep. a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. And, 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 and every time they put up a, 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 a bid in on the wall, drivers get all ruffled about it. Oh, why are they doing that, part-timers only? That's the wrong thing. It's, it's wrong. It's one union. We all started different. Some drivers come in and load truck. I've been loading truck for eight years. Some drivers come in different way. We all come in different way. When you work so hard and pay your dues and you're trying to get to the next level to take care of your family and do other stuff, and somebody gonna jump and talk about, oh, I got 25. You have a full-time position already. We're part-timers and we get treated like the worst and treated like shit from, from the union, not saying you guys, because you're new and you got my support, but that's how we, we get treated. If a full-time position is available, two position, they wanna rip the paper down, scratch name out, putting up stuff on Facebook talking about, oh, this can't happen and stuff like that. Are you, are you gonna be a union and you want our support and you're not fighting for us to, to get to get where you at already because you have a full-time position. That's wrong. I can't support a union and pay union do that that's that fighting for part-timers. And since I've been there eight years, I've been fighting for part-timers. I need full-timers to do the same too because when they have an issue, I'm there with them too. So really from the last board, that man fought with me. I lost my job and I'm gonna give him because he came and fought with me. All right, Sylvester, them, they fought with me. If a union need part-time support, you gotta fight for us too, because I can't support no union that pay a union dues. It's one union. Well, I, sir. <laughs> No, I, wanted, I wanted him to be up here. Um, I, I wanted to hold this to basically all the questions coming towards me, but in a question like this, I have Chris Williamson and Lawrence Grant that are very good fighters for inside people and know the language. And does anybody want to address that? And I'm sorry, what was your name, brother? Cox. Every, every building does have different rules and regulations. I found out myself about yeah, it. Yeah, but if something's been going on for many years and nobody fight to change it, it's been going on for too long. And like I said, we get fight from full-timers too. When we do something and try to make money to feed our family and take, we have family just like there too, all right? We load their truck, we unload it. Like, one more that we have to do to get in a position to get a full-time job. It's, it's very hard. It seems like it's out of reach for part-timers. That's what it seems like. I'm not qualified to go for driving because I've been in an accident. My vision is impaired. Many people have different reason that why they can't go driving, okay? So, oh, you want to go full-time, go driving. Then be a liability too, to my family, UPS, whatever, K kill somebody, crash. It's wrong. It's a wrong thing, and, and they fight us too much on that. They can't sit back. I'll be like, if it's two position, what's the problem of giving the high seniority part-time in the building and let a driver that, that put in his time and want to get off the road and come in the building, be a clerk or stuff, but that's all we keep getting in fight. I get fight personally. No, what and, position are you talking about? You got eight years in the company. 
I mean, what, what, what full time position are they offering inside the building? They offer many positions. Hold on, 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 they gonna keep on coming in. So what are we doing to change that? Because people that sit in there not watching, they need to watch the that, 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 That's supposed to be your question. Well, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Yeah, that, that was never like that. And I got 12. They're not offering any. What are you, what, what are you doing to make changes? What are you fighting to make changes? I'm what stepping what up to do it. Fight to you. That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. They have people that. Hold on, I'm going to talk to him. Because he's a union. Cops, cops, cops. Yo, D, D. Talk to my union brother. Listen, there are people that's part-time for 17 years, and they go through the same thing. So the years, I'm just telling you, the years that I've been here and what I'm experienced. You got 12 years, I'm telling you what I'm experienced. Is something wrong with that? All right, yep. so that's it. You tell me you got 12 years. I've been fighting for the eight years. What have you been doing for the past 12 years? I don't miss you, you mean. I could be with my family. I could be out saying. doing Uber and work money. What I'm my saying family. is, what positions are they offering for eight years? I'm telling you, they got subcontractors. This is what I'm saying. They got subcontractors cleaning the building, and they have subcontractors watching cars. We know how to do that. They have car positions. That's all it is. It's a subcontractor. You have to understand this, man, but it's all right, though. I'm out. I'm going yeah. to Cop. chill with my kids, yo. I'm... Come here, come here, come here. Cox has a valid question, okay? I've been here 30 years, okay? I started out as a part-timer. This is one thing that I keep telling people that they need to understand. When UPS opened up their doors, we were all full time. Okay? Everybody was full time. Okay? Then the part time came in. All right? Ron Carey implicated the part timers. He thought it was a good reason at that point. Right? But then there's always negative things because then they use the part timers like dogs. And for a lot of drivers who are part timers, you understand what we're talking about. What this board is saying, and I'm a part-time, I'm a full-timer now, and I went from being a part-timer for 12 years, I went from a 22.3, put my name on a bid sheet, to having a red circle job, and I also work with Timmy, okay? We're gonna give y'all our word that we're gonna fight for every member. There's no part-time, full-time, I don't like that. It's one local, it's local 804, and we gotta get back to that. Okay, we gotta get back to brothers and sisters. You might not like, see, I, I, I come from a family, all right? My father has 16 brothers and sisters, and there's only five of us. And me and my brothers and one sister, we fought all the time. But you could not come on that block and mess with one of my brothers or my sister, even if we just had a fight, and think that we wasn't gonna jump in. We need to get back to the base. When you mess with one 804 member, you're messing with all of us. The same attitude that the company have, we're going to give it right back to them. All right? We're sick and tired of the BS. All right? It's one local, brother, and we're going to try to bring it back to one local. I'm sorry, but... Like what he was saying, that was that was that's one of my questions as far as the part times. With positions becoming available, full time positions, certain positions like porter, car washer, clerk, being that a lot of them can't go driving or they don't know how to drive, whatever the case is, is there a way? I guess it will have to happen during the next contract negotiations to implement something in each building to where. It's, if they have some sort of, I don't, I don't know if it's deficiency or whatever, they can't see, like he was saying, to whereas if they have higher seniority versus a driver and a porter position is available and they have some sort of disability to whereas they can get that position versus a driver with lesser seniority, I don't know, I'm just saying. Because a lot of part-timers, they can't go driving. And it's just plain as day, so. 
that was the next question that somebody asked. There's um, ADA accommodations. You know, I know every building, every building's different as far as, um, you know, if it's a hub or a non-hub that uh, jobs are reserved for package car drivers and jobs, clerk jobs are reserved for inside people. The bottom line is that we do have to try to create more full-time jobs and everybody can't go out driving or this um, 22-4 hybrid nonsense that they're trying to implement now, you know, so... We are going to, again, we're not in there right now, but we're going to definitely go through all the lists, all the positions available. And I know with um, Lawrence and with Chris Williamson and uh, Dave Luby, who are so passionate about part-time issues, and even guys like, I mean, you know, Rocky and other guys that have defended people, you know, on the part-time, whether it was air walkers or whatever, we're going to monitor those jobs and try to create more part-time positions for, you know, more full-time positions for part-time. What about the full-time health where they don't have to drive? They can become a full-time health. We have they, full-time they could. Health. If they, there's they, a haven't been, they haven't been hiring them at all anymore. It's only been a couple. Yeah, but it is the, the combo helpers? No, regular full-time health. Oh, Foster Avenue is the only building that has that. Right? We have a couple of them, and they, they just got, they haven't been hiring any of them. We can't lose positions like that, can we? But we, we, we have a couple of them in our building, Forster Bill Forster, and they haven't hired any for the longest, and now you have someone with disability or whatever the case is. And they should they have that job. Right. They haven't put that job back out for, for the part-timers or what? Well, then so if that's, it's... If it's a job, a big job, then it's supposed to be. Fair. I don't know. I don't know how you become. I know it's a part-time position to go full-time, as far as being on a truck. You're just a permanent helper for that truck, and there's only a couple of them. And right. That's it was, it. It's only strictly in Foster Avenue that that right. that position oh, okay. is at. Well, if it's a well, if it's a, a job, then they can't just get rid of it. That that was a pilot plan for um, Greeny. Greeny was a very smart man. Um, but some people didn't like that because you had a lot of drivers saying, well, I need a license to deliver. Well, we did the last contract and we were the only local to come up with this is we created a hundred combo jobs where for the people on the inside who can't drive or would like to go out there and deliver and make more money, we did combo jobs. I don't think that they're maintaining those numbers. And that's one thing we're looking to do. We're looking to hold UPS accountable for every single full-time job that's owed to us. So you're saying that was a wash for the full-time helper with the 22.3? It it wasn't a wash. Foster was the only one out of all the builders that had it. It was a test pilot when when, um, Green Eden was in there. They never expanded. So now being that it was a test pilot and it's there... And if you're elected, are you going to stay on top of that, or you just that? That's something that we, because it's, it's not really in the contract set in stone, right? So that would have to be contract time, right? Um, I believe that every full time should be making the same. If you make every full time on the same level, it would it would um, get rid of a lot of problems that we have among ourselves. All right, if everybody's making the same, it would stop a lot of stuff. So I felt that a helper, a driver, 22.3, we're all hardworking men and women. Should be making the same the way it was when they opened the door. We need you right there again. So now, the next question comes to, it's, it's the peak season now. A yes. lot of part-timers are trying to go out to make some extra money during peak season. Mm-hmm. They're hiring seasonal helpers, but for some reason, they're not using Okay. The part timers, they're they're trying to that question. Wait, 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 let me finish. They're trying to come up with some oh, we need these certain routes to get familiar with who their seasonal helper is when there's really not a lot of work right now, whereas the part timers can go out for a couple of hours and make some extra money. But in the contract it says they're supposed to go first before the seasonal helpers. So how are y'all gonna stay on top of that? Because it's happening now and part timers are getting frustrated with that. Yeah. Thank you. Um Contractually, preloaders are supposed to go out. Unloaders have preference over 
the helpers, you know. So that's contractual. We're going to stay on top of it because our shop stewards are going to tell us, like I said, we have a network of people. Our shop stewards, our members, like Jamie, are going to tell the shop stewards. The shop stewards are going to tell the business agents, and the business agents will be contacting the labor managers and division managers, preferably the labor manager, managers, because division managers just blow smoke up our asses all the time. That being said, right, I know you have a list of questions there, right, and bro, I got you orange juice, right? Because it's, it's, it's already, it's, it's gonna get late and some guys are gonna have to leave. So I just wanna go through this. If anybody like wants to stay afterwards, we're all gonna be available for, for quite a while, right? Hi, my name is Nick Trimboli uh, from Suffolk. I just have a contract question. Uh, if when you guys take over, this national contract hasn't been settled because you know locals aren't settled or whatever. What type of leverage are you planning to use to try and force them back to the table? I mean, um, they're pushing the national. The national contract is going to be the national contract, and the local supplement they were negotiating last week, and we were just at a stewards meeting yesterday, and I don't know that they're going to really give a contract update next week because it is nominations. But um, I can tell you they're already on a local level. I think they're going to settle it. And they're going to settle it. They're going to settle it with a $500 pension increase that's going to soothe all people's hurt, you know. Oh, we got your $500 increase, blah, blah, blah. Right. And they're looking, the company wants 22-4 drivers to work Saturdays and Sundays. Okay, so what are you going to... Uh, all right, so... I, 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 understand. I, I guess my point is, is the international really doesn't represent 804 at all. No. They don't back us. They've really never given us anything in the last they haven't given 20 years. They haven't so my given point is, if there's still locals that aren't settled by the time you guys take office, why don't we have a decertification vote and become our own union? Because frankly... Frankly, we could use our own union dues and do a much better job than what they're doing. I agree with you. And at least the threat of a vote might put enough pressure on them 3, 000, to at least give us something else to vote on. 3,000 members voted no. 3,200 voted no on this contract. Right. And I know from guys sitting up here, from guys in the audience, that we were in buildings all the time, even up and down the East Coast, to try to get membership to vote. A decertification vote, I think, is going to be like... 75%. I know it's 75%, but, but if you bring issues that matter to people here in New York, for example, part-timers, hey, you know, part-timers, you should start at $18 an hour in New York. You know, drivers should have a $5,000 pension. Things sure? like that. No, I agree. Well, so going, I think if you, I think you can get membership to vote. It, it, I think people would be a lot more motivated to vote if they knew their vote counted more. The reason why a lot of guys didn't vote, I, be, I believe, is because they just felt like this international doesn't hear their voices and what they want and that wasn't addressed just, in the contract. That they're just going to make us take it. Exactly. So if we desert, decertify and become our own union, we can tear up that contract and make our own contract. That's just my point. It's kind of radical, but... It's a, good, it's a good point. You want to get there? Nick. Yeah, the, the third time, like Anthony was saying, it might not be done by the time we're in. We hope that it gets... If there's anything with these hybrids in there, then it needs to be continued. This this contract needs to uh, our, our supplement needs to be continued to be turned down. And 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 like I said, there is a certain uh, percentage that winds up happening whether the international can push it through. Remember last contract, locals like '89 and other locals got their supplements pushed down their throat by the international. So the hope and goal is that. When we get in there, that it's still open, that we can sit there and negotiate the supplement. Do they have over two thirds vote no? No. No. So as long as we have over two thirds vote no, 
I don't no, think they I can force it. No, I, we're definitely not going to get to three votes before the end of the year. Maybe we get one more. That's what we're hoping for. Exactly. That's what we're hoping so. for. That somebody that we're going to be in there going to the first of the year to sit there. You got to remember that, that the last contract and supplement didn't really get settled until April of the following year. So the, the goal is that it keeps getting turned down so that we can sit down and negotiate this supplement and do what's right for the membership. I think you should tear it up if it gets to you and say we're starting from scratch. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, Victor Vilas from Queens North. Um, he actually touched up on the question that I had, which was uh, about decertification. So, um, pretty much, I was going to ask you guys if you guys had any plan on it. Now, the following up question was pretty much is a problem that I think that uh, we have in this local. We do have a lot of passionate people. It's a large local. And the last voting, we had about 3,000 members that got out there and voted. The previous contract, uh, we had our, like like 1,500, 1,600. It was like half of what we did, right? Now, obviously, a lot of the members are here that are, um, a lot of the guys that are here in the slate, I've seen you guys out there campaigning, pushing out the no vote. I've seen guys, stewards in my building, members in my building. Everyone's going out there and doing their part to make sure that everyone gets uh, um, uh, informed. So my thing is this. Um, Shop stewards. What are the plans for the shop stewards in, in Local 804? Meaning, there's a lot of guys that are not active. There's a lot of shop stewards that are not active, not, not doing their part as a steward. Meaning, um, if it's maybe it can maybe it's not just speak for the drivers or the feeder department, but I know like in the twides and the preloads and, and those and those divisions of, of, um, of the operations, you don't see the activity. You don't see them being stewards. You don't see them going out there and, and talking to the members. You don't see them, you know, um, educating them, talk, doing any of their, their parts. Or do you guys have any plans on either grabbing those shop stewards? I mean, I'm assuming there's going to be hundreds of stewards. And how many of them do go to um, shop steward meetings? 40, 50? 20, 30? 80, right? 70, 80, whatever. Okay, so there's hundreds of them. So where are those hundreds being, you know, union members, being representative? Because obviously, you guys going to be the voice for us. Are you guys going to, you know, we were relying on you guys um, as business agents and, you know, union representatives, right? But these stewards are not out there doing their part to educate. So if these guys were out there educating, doing their part, for the membership, we will have more participation. Now, you said it was 75% we need of the local to be, um, to, to, to decertify. So these are the things that we're missing. There's like 4,000 members out there that are clueless maybe of what's going on or not passionate of what's going on because I believe it's the stewards that are not doing their part. So do you, as a, so pretty much short, um, any plans on that? Education on stewards, you know, uh, maybe rewriting the bylaws, and if you're a steward, maybe you need to be, you know, I mean, I'm not saying too harsh to be removed. Any plans on that? Um, you know what I found, Victor, and you have, you have a really good shop steward, and the shop steward before him was a really, really good shop steward. And they were passionate, and they took care of the members, in my opinion. Right? So people lead by example. Okay? Um, of course, we're going to really insist that every shop steward does their job 100%. I mean, that, that's a given. You know, I mean, the membership, like to your point, you were saying that you can tell who goes out of their way, who goes above and beyond, and, um, and who doesn't. And it's, you know... Hopefully the membership could see that with our program for sending people to workshops and education and all the other good stuff, whether it's at the union hall or outside places, you know, whether we have like um, Raul and I were talking about, because it's hard to get to Maspeth to, um, to the union hall on Review Avenue for everybody, like maybe having um, st uh, meetings, general member, or not a general membership meeting, but a meeting for 43rd Street at, what was it, an iron workers? local, like a, like a couple blocks away, just to get the membership more informed. And if the members see that their shop steward's not doing the job, then what happens? I'm not going to tell anybody that you should vote that gentleman out. That's no, put, not... put him to work. But, but pretty, it's pretty obvious, like, let's say that no one's going to step up, let's say, you know, and say, oh, I got a horrible steward, and let me, you know, run against him. So my, my point is, if a business agent's re responsible of that, 
if a business agent is responsible of that center or that building or that shift and sees that 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 there's no um, presence of a steward, could do you have a plan or you know where you reinforce? That, that business agent will go ahead and grab that steward and put him on the spot Victor? and do, do the right thing. Victor? Challenge him. I'll talk to them. Challenge him. I'll talk to them. Challenge him. Step into the square. You, you can, be Anthony, you can say something. You as a member, you as a member, right? You're paying for his salary. So you challenge him. He's not doing his job, you check him. I'm not talking about my students. I'm just, I'm just about saying in general, general, yeah, in, general, in, general in general, challenge every yeah. single member yeah. that's up top, challenge them. Let me say something on that. My name is Anthony Cerulli. Okay, uh, right. I've been, <laughs> thank you. I've been going to students' meetings since about 98. And the honestly, the problem that I've seen with it that's going to change and it has to go forward is that every steward needs to have a meeting with their center after a shop steward's meeting. And if the steward can't be there, then the alternate should be there. And, the, and I can tell you that the difference that we're gonna have is that we're gonna have bullet points that are gonna be brought back to every single center. And if that shop steward or alternate is not bringing it back to the center, then the business agents will have the meetings with those centers just so that all the members are informed as far as what's going on and what's happening. One thing I just wanted to say real quick that really I'm telling you annoys the shit out of me is that you talk about peak season, you talk about leverage with the company and, and using things against the company because that's the only way that you get this company to listen is whether you either you hit them in their pocket or you, you know, threaten to go public with stuff. We used to have peak meetings every single year. And we used to sit down and go over what was going to happen in every single building from the new shifts, whether it was a morning shift on a preload, whether it was night shifts. We went over who was going to be working in that building. We got new buildings that are all over that you still have outside people that are working. You still have outside port. You still have outside car washes in certain buildings. And you need to address this at those peak meetings. And a, and a damn good way to address this at any peak meeting is to put the fear into the company that if you're not going to meet our demands that we want going forward towards peak and making sure that the seniority people are doing the work and not the people and the helpers that are coming off the street, is that we have the right to charge the people, the Christmas helpers, union dues, and initiation fees. Okay? And the company doesn't like that. Because, now listen, if they, if they don't stay, they get the money back as far as initiation fees and dues if they don't make book. But the company knows damn well that if you're gonna have people come outside off the street and they're gonna have to pay a $150 initiation fee, they're not gonna want the job. And that's how we always got the company to make sure that whether it was a sort in Island City or a sort in Foster, that the seniority people got to do that work and that you stop all of this outside contracting. That's what needs to be done going forward here. Thank you. Real, real quick, Jamie, you're the last guy, okay? Because <laughs> we There's no referee here. There's no guy with a black and white on. Why? Good morning, all. Yeah, and listen, if, hold on, real quick. If anybody, if anybody that's leaving or that has to go, because I know it is a Sunday, it's a beautiful day out. If you could just volunteer to maybe take some raffle tickets or some sign-up sheets, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning, all. Good morning. WK2, Forest Avenue, 22 Tree. Um, what are your plans on protecting the combo drivers, the 22 Tree, from this new hybrid job? So that's one, right? And for some of the part-timers, according to Dex earlier, with the guys with seniority who are looking for inside job, is there a way that you could create some type of alternate, like for every four guys that come off the road, or something like that, I'm just saying a number. You have one inside part term or somebody with seniority who is looking for a full-time job, a porter, a clerk. Um, like I said before, the jobs are reserved for you know different buildings for different classifications. The combo helpers, which you're a combo helper. Not a helper, combo 22 oh, 3. 20, No, you're not, the hybrid drivers aren't gonna affect you. Okay. You're, not, you're not gonna have your job in jeopardy. I'll tell you that right now, you're not going to. And okay. for some combos with the split shift inside and out, 
inside building and air rate. Is there a way that we could get that combined in one rather than having two different? No. This is this is this is all like Article Forty language that's been, you know, ripped apart, and you know, it's. I don't agree with it, but it, it's different. It's language on the international level. Vinny, guys, uh, good luck with everybody. Uh, good morning, everybody. Lennox James Foster Avenue. Just What's want to be back quick. I don't want to stay too long on the mic. What we have here is really a, a frustration. A frustration from Foster Avenue, particularly because we have not had any, I see that. any, any <laughs> representation at the executive level. So the frustration is brewing. And it's been going on for a long time. It's just bubbling right now to the surface. So there's a lot of frustration from executive level not getting the help. I know that you guys are trying to get into office right now, and we're with you. The focus, we can keep the focus, all right? So it's just a frustration of what's been going on at Foster. The lack of presence at Foster. Avenue in general. So we know what we know what's going on. And I as an activist in, inside, I know what's going on. I know you guys are mean well. I know Lawrence. I know all of you, all you guys there. So you know, having said that, I'm with you guys all the way. We appreciate the support. We're, like I said, we're, we're going to make our presence felt in every building, okay? You, you know I'm going to charge you for skipping the line, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah, yeah all right, whatever. I ain't with that. Perone, Cerulli, Cohen, Heck, Cintron. Listen, salute to all our brothers and sisters out here. Yeah. Hi, Jody. Hey, good morning. My name is Anthony Ward, Costa Avenue, Brooklyn, Marine Park, infamous Brooklyn the worst center or worst building that they had to split in half. Ooh. Took all the bad seeds out. Mine too. Mine and, too. Uh, yeah, they had to take all the bad seeds out, which were really good seeds. Okay. My, my thing is, I came in to this culture, and it's a culture. This, this union thing is a culture. If you don't know, you're going to know. My father, retired Marine Corps vet, AFL-CIO, uh, worked with transit, retired, hung up his jersey in all capacities, okay? He, he taught me a lot, taught me a lot. My goal today and tomorrow is to make sure that anybody that's coming in after me is protected. Yep. So that should be the goal. That should be the goal of, I don't care what slate is running, I don't care. That's why, and I have to apologize to you. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. It's all right. Whoever's in office, if they're not doing their job, check them. Challenge them. You got a book? Read it. That's your secondary Bible. No? Yeah, yep. Anthony, know your laws. By, know this your constitution. Is, is what? Know your bylaws. Know what the contract means. Take your contract to your to a lawyer, any lawyer, to just proof it. Let him come back to you and say, you know what, you're getting fucked. Are any? Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Any kids? No kids. Any kids in, in the house right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Screwed. <laughs> right? So, you know, at the end of the day, every member is responsible for making sure that they know what it is that they are responsible for as far as their rights are concerned. So when, when a supervisor comes up to you and says, hey, you didn't make sport today. You didn't meet up to your numbers today. Guess what? You cannot have that conversation with me, right, without representation. A lot of guys ain't doing that. A lot of guys ain't doing that. I'm going to give you a quick answer. I have a... Um, I didn't even ask the question yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, I'm I, waiting. I, I, know, I know time is of the essence. I, I get it. I got it. I get it. My, my, my question is this. <sighs> we swallowed the last contract, right? We all swallowed that. <laughs> That was a concession, big time. Because you got access points, you got show posts. That's what full that's running, right? This contract, are we still gonna run with that? 
Oh, you've been taking and run with it? Well, no, I, well, no, 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 because we're running with it anyway, regardless. We, we, we had to eat that. Access points and strip post. Working with the, the post office, working with these local drugstores and whatnot, you know, siphoning work off. <laughs> Are we going to do that again on this contract? That's, that's, that's my question. That's, you know, something that Mr. Dennis Taylor and Mr. Hall and Hoffa and the rest of them seem to not really care about. Right? They just don't, they don't care. That's a company. Thing. Right. So, you know, we make calls, we put in concerns and, you know, that's the company. I have to say, I don't know if everybody else here notices, but I see a lot, a lot more shore post on my truck. And a lot more going to the post office too. But, listen, you know, especially when you get to your stop and you see a package that you should have done. But, but to get back to yeah. what you were saying before, and yes, there's sir. four more gentlemen behind you, including uh, I forgot I, I his got name you. at the I end. Got you. I know. I'm in and out. Exit. <laughs> no, but I have. As far as educating the members, we all believe up here in educating the members. I have a bald-headed gentleman. I don't know where he's sitting. He's my alternate. Oh yeah, yeah. He brought, he's got like flame tattoos and stuff. I mean, you know, he's my alternate steward. You know what he tells my new guys to do? He tells them, and he's also a safety mentor. I wanted him on the safety committee just so he could spy for me. Okay, so he grabs these new guys, and when they make book, he instructs. I like that word. He instructs them to go to the union hall and to go talk to Tom Lamontanaro and to go talk to the people at the as front desk. Should. As he should. And that's what he does on, on his own. He did that. I said, that's a great idea. As he you should. Know, I, I, have, I have a lot of guys in my center here that are puppies, that me and you would say they're puppies. And, and they I'm come a puppy to, too. They come to union meetings. They're always there. Right. And that's the shop stewards doing that, the alternates. End of the day. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Everybody wants to still work. Everybody still wants to pay for their mortgage, their car, their house, their, you know, everybody wants to do that. The company is finding ways to eliminate that. They're finding ways to do that. And it's called division. Yes, sir. And it's called division. And, and I'm yes, telling you, sir. No, nobody should lose their house, job, wife, or family. And that's what this company has done to they us. They threaten us. They don't, they don't care. care, but they're gonna have to start effing caring, All Anthony. Right. Uh, good morning to everybody. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say, my name, first of all, is Sonja Medrano. I'm from Foster Avenue. I know Cerulli, my David Cintron, and Cohen. I wanna ask, something to Dave Central. If you don't mind coming up. No disrespect. What's up, brother? To none of you. I'm asking you, I've been with you 25 years and yep. more. Yep. You know that. Yep. I'm asking you as a man, okay? Yeah. For my, my wife, my daughter, you guys, if y'all get on, I want you to promise us, everybody here in Foster Avenue and everyone else, that you're gonna do the right thing. I'm being emotional because it's a concern to me. I am close to retirement, you know that. So I want you, as a man, to promise me that you're gonna do the right thing and you have the support of me, my wife, my daughter, and my dogs. You understand me? Got you, brother. That's why I'm here, my brother. You know? You know, brother, that's why I'm here, you know? This is the reason why I'm here, because for you guys, you know? Because I'm tired of this shit. got me a little uh... let it out I got you let it out Damn. Um, that's how that's how a lot of guys feel you know and uh, we're putting our faith in you guys because you know we know we've dealt with Cerulli we've dealt with Dave Mark Cohen we know these are good guys we don't know all of them but I know that if these guys are fucking with you guys excuse my language then you guys gotta be fucking okay. So, my question, is, well, I have more of a statement. One thing, like you said, hurt the company where it hurts, in the pockets, and no, we're not allowed to strike because Hoffa's a piece of shit and what's going on is going on. 
But the one thing we can do, you know, I'm just putting it out there. I mean, the day after Thanksgiving is a holiday, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, you know, I ain't fucking working that day. <laughs> you know, and I hope that there's a lot of people out there throughout the local. If we could get about 3,000 guys say we're not fucking working on the day after. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to instruct the workforce here, gentlemen. It's a holiday. It's a fucking holiday. Um, could I... Can I say something? What, what was your name, brother? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce myself. Anthony Rosario, Fosterville as well. Yes. yes. I, rec I recognize names, but, um, you know, a few, maybe four or five years ago, six years ago, whatever it was, you know, I sent a, I sent a text message out. My, my manager and my DM had a, had a little thing where they were just firing people, taking them off the job because they wanted to, all right? Or disciplining guys too heavy. So, you know, this wasn't the day after Thanksgiving, it was election day, but the same thing. Nobody ever takes off election day. Everybody comes in for the, for the triple time. So I sent a nice text message out, knowing that it would get to the manager and the DM, because everybody, not everybody, but there are some guys that like, oh, look what he sent out, mm -hmm. right? So I sent out a very polite text message to my whole center, or most of it, that, um, you know, election day is a holiday, um, it's a union contractual holiday. I personally will not be at work. I'm going to exercise my right to vote, and then I'm going to go to church and pray for all my brothers and sisters who have been wrongfully discharged by this company. Right. And 30-something 30, 30 people didn't show up for work. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, you could... That's not directing the workforce. Okay. All right. But these are... But, Anthony, these are sacrifices... Like, you know, it's New York City... It costs a lot to live here. You know, it's the high cost of living. There's stress. There's pressure. Guys need to make money. Now with these 22-4 drivers, they're going to say they're going to cut everybody's overtime. So people are worried. But, you know, I get it. And people are always worried. But, you know, people in unions for 100 years sacrificed. They got beaten. They got stabbed. They got bloodied, killed for the benefits that we have. So you know what? My philosophy is, and, and I had people before tell me, oh, you can't tell somebody not to work, not to make overtime. You can't tell that preloader not to go out and help, right, that day, because he's got to eat, and it's true. But at what point, because I hear the frustration in Foster Avenue, I hear the frustration in Maspeth, I hear the frustration in 43rd Street, so at what point do we say, you know what, I don't need the extra 100 bucks in my pocket this week, I want the extra 500 in my pocket six months from now and I want them to treat us correctly yeah. sure. so I get your point all right thank you thank you hey what's up hey rich rich polakowski just had two knees replaced a while ago and look how he healthy and sexy he looks anyhow uh, I, just, I got full confidence in you guys uh, I don't know the guy's name that came up and like praised you but I see a lot of le cmpa hats a lot of you guys have that insurance? Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah, right? Yeah. I was the first one to get it in 804. I don't know about that one. Yeah, ask Bill Davis. Where are you from? I'm from Island City. Jody, Memphis. don't start arguing. Jody, before you started selling it a couple of years ago, I had it from Bill yeah, Davis. Give me a year. Years ago. Ask Bill Davis. 2005, 2006, 2007. I was the first in 804 to have it. And guess what happened? You can, Jody, feel free. Facebook me, get on it. <laughs> Ask anybody. When Vinnie Perot was my business agent, <laughs> I canceled it. <laughs> I swear to God, all my kids, I canceled it. Because back in the day, these guys were out for a year, year and a half, and I didn't do anything wrong. I'm like, yo, I'm, I need this insurance. Because Joe Conforti's like, eh, you know what? Your shoes aren't polished. You're going to be on the street for a So I got the insurance. Vinnie Pearl, my business agent, I told all my guys, my center, I'm like, Vinnie Pearl's my shop steward, uh, my business agent. I can come to work naked, and nothing's going to happen to me. And <laughs> Don't I'm do telling that. you guys, I'm not telling you to cancel the insurance, but with these guys in charge, Man, you come, maybe you have to wear pants to work, but I am 100% confident that you guys and girls put your confidence behind these guys. They know what they're doing, and the girls know what they're doing.
last but not least, Jamie Haynes, moderator. All right. My first statement is... First. Oh, oh. Yeah. If, you, if you're on Facebook, Local 804 Teamsters, please don't give me a hard time when you're vouching for somebody. Please. Well, I have a, I'm going I'm to just run through them. You can answer them how you feel. I have one question for Hector and Dave. What's going to happen with the radio station or the podcast that y'all have? That's one. And another question is, being that we work on weekends, Saturdays, and maybe Sundays, will there be some type of representation for the part-timers? Yes. yes. As well as the drivers yes. on Saturdays. Yes, there will. Sundays. Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> also, well, my last one is, well, being, when you do get elected, you said you do, last, I got well, excited, but go ahead. If you do get elected, I know when Tim Sylvester was there, when? he had, well, I, know, I don't know if it was just for me, I probably was special, but he had an open door policy where I can call or I can text him, well, I text him, whatever situation I had, and he got Cerulli right on it, like, like immediately. I didn't have to wait five and six days where you have an open door policy for drivers and part-timers to contact you. And if we contact you via the hall, where you actually pick up the phone and not let it go to voicemail and then don't contact us back. Wait, and also. <laughs> <laughs> dealing with. Did some, you breathe yet? <laughs> dealing with the last chance agreements. If, and whenever it does come down to a last chance agreement, if you had to make a last chance agreement, will you please start to put in there an expiration date to whereas yep. this last chance agreement only lasts for three months, six months, seven months, also for that particular offense, not later on the company add other offenses, oh, this is a, this is a part of it. The guys are getting, they're getting frustrated with the last chance agreement being somewhat open. Or oh, whatever. Can I answer that one first? Oh, okay. And you said that was the last one, Jay. No, but this is my you last. Said it was, this is my last one. Can can you and also can you please get a security guard for Forsterville at the employee entrance? Because I feel very unsafe. They have a security guard where we come in at the with the trucks, but there's no guard at the employee entrance. There's a guard inside the building, but you got to get to the building. Once you get an employee entrance, you can go wherever you want. It's, it's very unsafe. But they have one at Forster, but they don't have one at Forsterville. Okay. So, I mean, you know, that's something that could be talked to the company about, but... Um, they're saying it's, it's very let me, unsafe. Let me, let, me answer, let me answer your questions, right? Um, a lot of people in this room have my phone number. You know, whether it's my phone number, that you're calling me, texting me, um, on social media, you know, me on Messenger, and I think um, that I respond personally really quick to everything. I mean, you've you've contacted right, but once me. Once you get in, would right, that, that, that would never change, and that's not going to change for anybody in here. These, I, I I try to get these guys off the phone. Last night I was on the phone so much that my wife's mad at me because I killed her betta fish. Okay, I threw, literally threw it down the sink by accident. I was just doing some stuff. But that's never going to change. The last chance agreements, I am 100% not a fan of last chance agreements. Right? I think they're BS that the company just tries to get away with. Right? Um, you know, I've been asked when I was a union rep, I think twice, to bring a guy back with the last chance agreement, and one of them was with my good friend Carlton Omar Caesar, and um, I told him to get the hell out of here, right? And he wound up bringing the guys back anyway. But um, I don't believe in it. If there, if there is something, I mean, like I always go back to the specific of, uh, you know, two guys fought in the locker room, and you know they had they had a fight, they knocked each other out, whatever. And um, you know, there's in the contract when the UPS policy it says that there should be no violence in the workplace, right? So you sign a last chance agreement that's specific that you're not going to punch somebody out in the future. You know, if, if they offer it and a member wants to sign it because it's his job, because according to their policy, they could discharge you anyway for something like that. But I'm certainly never, ever going to be in agreement to them making some open-ended last chance agreement you know, that the member's going to look at. You know, the member is nervous enough as it is, thinking, my God, it's my job. I'm never going to get another job that pays this well with the benefits. I'll sign anything. You know, it's up to us to explain to him what the ramifications are of that. 
you know, and, and personally my belief is that they shouldn't be signed. You know, if, if the member chooses to do it, it's got to be explained, like, why he's doing it and exactly, you know, word for word what the agreement means, you know. Hold on, Mr. Cerulli would like to say something. Listen, in the past we have had last chance agreements that were brought back to the hall and at certain points were reviewed with lawyers and was, uh, reviewed with the executive board. Uh, I think in this administration, it is with us, it is, it is definitely going to change. There shouldn't be any last chance agreements unless it's, you know, totally reviewed or looked at. You know, with the panel system now, what happens at the panel system, then they should be talked about and looked at while you're at panel. But I, I can honestly say that what winds up happening is that when I was a business agent, any time there was some kind of last chance agreement that the company would want to give to me, it went back to the hall and it was looked at and it was decided whether or not that person should, you know, go for it or not. And, and I can honestly tell you that I never liked the fact of last chance agreements because of the fact that it all depends on what's the wording in there. I know a lot of people have got them and are still there because maybe they wouldn't have survived the panel case and you really have to look at that. There are some people that the company would go to them and say, the company offered me a last chance agreement, I want to accept it. And it's a very hard situation when that person is sitting there telling you that they want to accept it. All that I could do at that point was go to the executive board that was in uh, a control of the union and let them tell me what they wanted to do with it. And there were a lot of cases even at arbitrations and panels. But I, I feel that, that going forward that there should not, it, it's got to be reviewed, it's got to be looked at. But the, the difference being is that I feel that now with this administration, us being in there, me now being on the executive board, they can be looked at the right way and not be taken advantage of. And yes, 100%, not one of those things, they have to have, whether it's two months, four months, whatever it is, it can't be open for the life of the person working here. That is definitely absolutely absurd, and that's a commitment going forward. Good morning, gentlemen. For those that don't know me, I haven't had the pleasure to introduce myself. My name is Lawrence Grant. I'm out of 43rd Street. I'm probably the youngest out of everybody up here. I only got 12 years in the company. I've been in store for, I think, 10 now. But um, the frustration coming out of Foster Avenue, I just wanted to touch on that. When I heard y'all have Mark Johnson, I just knew y'all was doomed. <laughs> Sorry, no personal, but I do want to give y'all my personal, letting y'all know when we win, y'all will fill my presence in Foster Avenue. <laughs> drivers, insiders, everyone. I've represented drivers, I've represented 22 threes, and trust me when I tell you, I know how it is. Brother, that Tuesday to Saturday, I've been through it in 43rd Street. Every one of my guys, that's Tuesday to Saturday, it's always off on Tuesday. I don't see why it's any different in your building from any of the other 14 buildings that we have. But again, y'all will feel my presence in Foster Avenue, if not daily, at least two to three times a week. You need to see your eyes. You see my eyes now, brother? <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I need to, I need to, I need to no, no offense. Real quick, no, no, real quick. Guys, I know time is short. I want to appreciate, and I'm going to let Jamie talk, but because he likes to talk. But if, I just want to thank everybody for coming out in case you have to leave. But if you can, if you like what you hear, if you like the slate, and if you feel you want to take some pictures with us to put on a website, and to show your support, we would greatly appreciate it because we want to let this company know that this is the slate that they're going to have to deal with in 2019. Okay. Um, regarding the 70... <laughs> I'm Benjamin Hampton from JFK. Laura. How many, how many 72s a person permitted to have? 72. <laughs> According to them, I mean, 
Because they keep on adding on 72s and 72s on top of 72s, and nothing is never getting addressed. <laughs> that, it's frustrating. That's why I'm huffing and puffing. I'm sorry. Um, stuff, stuff has to be addressed right away. It has to be filed for harassment. It has to be charged with an uh, NLRB. Mm -hmm. But they're okay. psychologists. <laughs> now I need that. Go, yeah, no, maybe no. you do. Who knows? They have it right now. Non conventional approach. Non conventional. Out of our bullshit. I'm going to be the last person. Oh my God, he's wearing slippers. <laughs> Yo, they're going to keep, they're gonna, they're gonna keep doing it, but we're going to keep putting in harassment grievances, filing charges against them, and all the. BS, all the little trivial stuff yeah, that they're going is going to go away. Because it seems like they have no, like they have no repercussion whatsoever. No, they don't. And None. You know something, zero. Benjamin, it's also because of the representation. Okay. That's true. And if you have a person that's going to stand up to them and face them face to face, okay, and you know, <laughs> the representation is what's going to make a difference in that matter. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank I got my support. Though. All right. Can I, can I love with this? No cursing? What? No cursing. No cursing. D Dom, Mass Bit, Center of the Universe, Flushing. Represent. Yeah. Vin, you guys know that Vinny's been our shop steward forever. You know why we buy donuts when the guy makes book? Because you need to make them feel like they're part of a family, right? That's why they buy donuts, so you can learn who they are. It works in Flushing. They don't change start times to 930. They don't, because Vinny takes care of it. Things get taken care of when the shop steward, the alternate, the business agent takes care of it. You guys have to understand that. We're the union. We'll hold them accountable. d -Dum. I love you. I never said that before, but we want a group photo, and we're going to stay here later. All right, so f please finish. I'm wrapping it up. These are the guys that are going to make the change. Let everybody know, because this amount of votes is not going to make them win. We need, everybody needs a vote. Thank you, Dominic. You want me to take it? Hey guys, if you could... Come. We're... Congratulations. Purchase your tracks today. Mm -hmm.